Hi there, it's James from Roboflow. In this video, we're going to write a Python script that narrates some of the contents of a given photograph, such as this image here of my kitchen, and tells you the type of room that a photo was taken in. So in this case, kitchen. To do this, we're gonna use two publicly available computer vision models. These models are available on Roboflow Universe, which is the world's largest repository of open source computer vision projects. We're going to firstly use this data set called All Finalize. All Finalize is able to identify various different things you might see around the house. So an exhaust fan, a dishwasher, um, a desk, among other classes. Uh, this doesn't cover everything. So in this video, we're not going to be able to identify this spoon here that uh, I used to make my morning cup of tea. Um, but rather we'll be able to identify the bigger things like the fridge and the oven um, and the cupboards too um, because they're covered in the classes for this model. We're also um, going to use the MIT seam recognition model. But before we do, let's test out this model um, which shows identifying objects in a room. This is going to be the image that we use in our script. So I just dropped it into RoboFlow Universe and we see we've got a fridge, it identifies a cupboard and an oven too. Again, it doesn't identify everything, but this is good enough for a first version. Of course, we could always clone this model and build our own that's more fine tuned to identify particular classes too. Now, the next model we're gonna use is MIT Indoor Scene Recognition. So our last model said there's a fridge in the room, there's a cupboard in the room, but that doesn't necessarily indicate what type of room someone's in. So you could have a fridge in your bedroom, for example, a mini fridge, or you could have a cupboard in your office room. So we're going to use the MIT indoor scene recognition model, which although a benchmark is still great for um, understanding the type of room a photo was taken in. So this can identify everything from closets um, to a kitchen to a library. Um, so if I were to drop in our photo here of a kitchen, it positively identifies this as a kitchen. So in this video, we're going to uh, be able to speak out that this is a kitchen and some of the objects in the kitchen. So let's get started. We're going to write a new Python script. Um, to get started, we'll first import a few libraries. We're going to use time. We'll use the OS library. We're going to use a text-to-speech library called uh, PyTTSX3. And then, of course, we're going to use the RoboFlow pip package, which you can download using pip install RoboFlow. Next, we're going to bring in the RoboFlow API into our script. I have saved my API key locally in an environment variable. Um, so I'll access it using that code. And then we're going to bring in our workspace using rf.workspace. Great. We've just initialized everything we'll need to start using the RoboFlow Python package. We're also going to initialize our speech to text engine, which we can do using the init function. And then we're going to set a property called a rate. Now rate allows you to specify how fast the model talks. And um, for this video, um, I'm going to set it a bit lower. You can tweak this as you want. I find 150 to be a reasonable talking speed for this particular package. And then we're going to define a wrapper function called say. Now say is going to call an engine.say function, which speaks out the given text. We're also going to print the text to the console and then call the engine run and wait function, which will speak out the text and wait and then do the next thing in our script. So now we have all the scaffolding in place, we can get started. Um, and I think the best place to start would be to identify the type of room we're in. So to do so, we're going to define a new function called get room type and we'll pass in an image file, which uh, we'll start with kitchen one. So we will import our model using the RoboFlow package indoor scene recognition equals workspace dot project MIT indoor scene recognition. And then we will declare a new variable called model, which on which we can run the inference. So we'll be using version five, the latest version of the model on RoboFlow Universe. And then we can make a prediction on a local image using model.predict. And we'll pass in the image file that we used. Um, 
And here, to get the results for our model, we're just using one line of code, which I think is pretty amazing. Uh, rather than having to worry about setting up a local model um, and doing all of the ML ops work, we're just using one line of code to run a prediction. Next, we will get the contents of the prediction uh, using prediction.json, and then we'll return this value. So let's call our function and see what happens. But before we do, we of course need to identify, uh, identify the image we want to run it on. So that would be kitchen1.jpg. We will call our function get room type with our image. And then we will actually assign this to a variable called room. And then we will speak out using that say function um, something like we could say, we could say, you are in a, and then we'll call room type. So this room contains a JSON object, so we'll need to um, actually retrieve our prediction from it. So we can do so by using the predictions value and then getting the top value from the first item in the list. Let's run our code and see what happens. This will take a little moment while everything loads up. You are in a kitchen. There we go. It successfully identified that we were in a kitchen, um, and by it I mean this MIT model, and also it spoke out the fact that we're in a kitchen. Great. Now we will um, go on to the next task of identifying specific items in the room using the all finalized model that we spoke about earlier. So to get started here, let's define a new function, uh, get items in room. This function is going to call a new model uh, called all finalize. Then we will get the latest version of the model. Now, if you're curious about um, how you get this string, how you get the model name, you can always go into um, the model page on Marbleflow Universe. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you will get a list of deployment options. So um, our hosted API, Luxonis Oak, uh, among others. And then there's a couple of scripts you can use um, in Python, JavaScript, um, to start using a model. In this case, I'm not going to show it because it does add your API key automatically. That will be made available if you have a free RoboFlow account. Next, um, let's get back to our scripts. And then we're just going to follow the same pattern as earlier. We're going to do a model.predict on our um, image file. Um, let's add in uh, that there. And then uh, let's set a low confidence for this. Let's say 10% just to see what the results are like. And then we will get all of our predictions again using the same code as we did earlier. And then all we want is just the labels. So all of the labels spoken. So for that, we can uh, use our list comprehension. So we'll get the class name for each prediction in the predictions JSON object. And then we're also, oh, we're also, what's going on here? Oh, for p in. Uh, we're also gonna save our prediction to a file which we'll call out.png just so that we can see uh, what our model's predicted. And then we'll return the, this list of labels. So now that we have this list of labels, we need to narrate them. For that, we're gonna um, define a separate function called narrate, um, let's say narrate room. We'll take in the room name and we'll also take in the labels that we identify. Um, so let's move this your in a code to the narrate room function. So first we'll start by saying you're in a kitchen or bedroom. Then we'll pause for just a little moment, one second. And then if there are more than one label uh, that have been identified, then we will say I see, and then we'll wait for uh, let's say 0 0.5 seconds. Um, and then for each label in our list of labels, we will convert it to lowercase just because we're printing it out to the console. And then we will say, and this is a bit hacky, but we'll say a, uh, and then a label. Of course, it might be an or a, uh, um, but you can play around with this uh, logic and an introductory statement as you'd like. Well, we will then uh, call time.sleep for 0 0.5 seconds. In doing so, um, our model is 
uh, going to make predictions, then uh, it will speak out each prediction with a small interval between them. Uh, this makes sure that everything isn't kind of smooshed together. Um, and then that's us. So let's uh, actually call our narrate room function. Um, so we'll call it on room type. And let's see, and the labels, um, which we didn't retrieve, but we can by calling the get items and room function that we called earlier and pass in the name of our image. Now we have the room type and the labels and we just have to make one quick fix and we will rename this to room type. Now let's see what happens when we run our script. What we'd be expecting is firstly, the type of room is narrated, so you're in the kitchen. And then our model, uh, or rather our program, is going to say, I see, and then list all of the things it sees in the room. So let's run our script and see what happens. We will call Python free app. Let's run it. You are in a kitchen. I see. A cupboard. A cupboard. An exhaust hood. A fridge. An oven. Not bad. Now, the reason that I wanted to save my predictions to this local file is so I can just see all those. So we can see if we zoom in a bit here, there are some false positives. So we did set a low confidence rate. So for example, if I make this bigger, um, it got the oven right, which is great. But, uh, so it knows there's an oven here, but identify the drawers, the cupboard. So maybe a higher confidence rate would be appropriate. And um, usually we go for something like at least 50%, but because this model um, hasn't been fine tuned to my particular use case, um, I um, set a lower confidence to see what predictions we could get. It did get the fridge, it also got the cupboards, although the binding box is a tad big, and it also got the exhaust hood too. Um, so that's pretty good. And it identified we're in a kitchen too, which is amazing. And here we have uh, the transcript of um, what our program states. Uh, you're in a kitchen, I see a cupboard, another cupboard, and one of those was that false positive, the exhaust hood, the fridge, and the oven. Now, the implications for this sort of technology are great. Um, here, we just got started by writing um, 68 lines of codes just to uh, narrate the contents of this one image. But of course, using this foundational logic, you could um, develop a system that um, uses a video camera and as you go through your house, narrates different objects in it. Um, or of course, you could train a model that's tailored to a specific use case. So one example might be an app that narrates, um, that helps you uh, guide you around, say, a train station or a supermarket. Um, your model could identify specific things like um, a danger sign or um, a pavement or um, e even something like a, a shop sign and then run character recognition to tell you what's there. Um, so you could build apps that kind of help guide you through different places. In this case, um, it's going to tell me all the things in my kitchen and even this is immediately useful. Um, if someone were to be visually impaired, uh, using this sort of model, they'd be able to see all of the things in the room. Of course, some modifications would be required. So here it just speaks out everything in the room, which is great, but we'd want to expand on this script to um, read out um, things perhaps in order um, left to right um, to help guide people. Um, and then maybe we could add in uh, some additional computer vision magic and uh, measure um, kind of the rough distance between between different objects so it could better guide someone. And then of course, this is running on a static image, but if this was running on a video, we could run predictions at a certain interval. So we could say every five seconds or when a button's pressed, tell me what's uh, in front of the camera. So that way I can walk around my house, press a button and it keeps telling me on demand um, what's in front of me, which is again um, is a stepping stone to building um, accessible technologies that uh, leverage computer vision to narrate the contents of our room. 
So again, in this video, we have written a script that narrates contents of a room as well as the type of room that you're in. Um, all of the models here are uh, free and publicly available. And of course, you can go train your own on Rubberflow as well. Um, feel free to explore Rubberflow Universe. There are, again, over 100,000 projects on here um, that range from everything from identifying playing cards uh, to identifying planes and aerial imagery. So I'm sure there's plenty there you could use to um, identify specific objects in different rooms or um, identify something else that you um, want to see and speak out. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video and so we will put the uh, code for this um, project all on GitHub and there'll be a link in the description below and uh, see you in the next one. Thank you.